Okie dokie, in this problem, we are going to solve for the expectation value of the x or the average position of the particle in the infinite square well. And of course, we can always uh, represent this in integral form where we just slam the magnitude squared of the wave function by the appropriate operator for that expectation value. In this case, it's just x and integrating over all space. In our case, the our space that we are concerned about right now is just uh, zero to a. Oops, zero to a for the infinite square well. And for this uh, part of the problem, we already saw, found that in uh, part b. So we can just go ahead and throw that in there. And it's gonna make for kind of a long integral, but I'll just go ahead and do it. So that value for the magnitude squared was just all this that I'm about to write here. Um, one over A times the quantity of, and feel free to fast forward. If you already saw this, if you already know this from the uh, previous part of the problem, this glob of uh, sines and cosines. Oops. Not n for this one because our n was just 1. And we did this just through the foiling process and then some other fancy stuff. And this was actually the uh, um, one of the identities that we'll actually use another identity for later on in this problem. But we're not there yet, so let's just go ahead and finish writing this guy out. All right, there we go. We're done. I think that's everything. All right, so uh, that is what the... Uh, integral looks like after we substitute the value in for the modulus squared for part b and we can then now just distribute this uh, x to all the constituent uh, linear values and then just throw this one over a out here oops that is a that's an a for sure all right times all right big quantity of so just to save time i'm just going to copy Here we go. I'm just throwing x in, in front of all these right here. Oh, bracket. Oh boy. Let's go. Move you over a little bit, make room for this bracket, and then dx. All right, great. So now this is where uh, math comes in. These these ones are uh, these these two are actually uh, fairly common. Uh, Integrals that we're going to have to solve in uh, quantum mechanics would be used to get used to them. It's good to get used to them. Uh, you can do them integration by parts by just throwing u, uh, doing where like u is equal to pi x over a, and then like you know the du dv, or however you uh, remembered how to do it, and then throwing x in and changing the limits and stuff too. Uh, integral tables work well, and um, I prefer just calculators like Wolfram. But again, that just depends on uh, the way you're learning, the instructor, if you're taking a course. But either way, you're gonna end up with this answer. We're just gonna jump to it. Uh, it'll be, so this term was actually, this term's just uh, a squared over four. This one's actually a squared over four as well. And so looking at this integral, actually, this is just a constant right here. So that can move out of the integral sign right here. So I'm just gonna draw this one right here. This integral, again, um, is gonna be best to just look it up in like a book or a calculator or integration by parts. Again, just depending on the expectations of your instructor or yourself if you're just doing some self-learning too. But I'm just gonna move this down. But So we'll just go ahead and throw these values into our area right here. So this is gonna end up looking like a squared over four plus another a squared over four, and then throwing in our eight over nine, a over, well, a squared over pi squared. We're just gonna do that. And then our glob of constants that we, that we had over here, which is the uh, two cosine three omega t, 
And again, that omega was uh, detailed in the question itself, uh, like a hint of what we should do to simplify everything, right? So um, some more algebra happens here. That one over a gets distributed, and then those go to one over, or a over four, those combine to be uh, a over two. And same thing happens with this area over here. And then we'll finally get a over two minus, we'll just go a over two, and I'll explain why I kept it in this form and didn't really distribute that a over two uh, in a second. Cosine three, omega t, right? So the reason why I didn't want to distribute this one over a over two is because it, like generally in physics, it's good to leave things in terms of other important things. And in this case, our expectation value here is one over, um, is, oh, of course that glob, but that one, that a over two, is actually very meaningful. So if we just draw the um, the infinite square well real quick here. So here's our our walls where the these uh, um, potentials go up to infinity, right? And this is our x and this is a, right? So a over two is right there in the middle, right? And so we can, what this expectation value is actually telling us is that it's some value centered around the a over two, and then it oscillates because you have a time dependent form and it oscillates uh, sinusoidally in the form of cosine here with some amplitude, and that amplitude is right here. I think that's another part of the question is uh, what's the amplitude of your oscillation? So the, the, the amplitude of the oscillation is, is right here. Uh, the, whatever is the coefficient of these, sign, like the time dependent uh, function right here. And if we just approximate this value right here, this whole thing is uh, approximately um, 0.36 times a over two. And again, leaving it in terms of things that make sense to us, right? That we can physically inter interpret. Uh, so it's about 0.36 uh, in terms of oscillation, so I don't know, I'm just like graphically put it right here, right? So at most, this particle is oscillating from here to here as time goes on, right? Uh, cosine, uh, according to a cosine, right? So it doesn't really, let's say, it just doesn't go out outside of these bounds. And then the frequency at which it goes back and forth is just in right here, the three, uh, the three omega. And again, the omega being uh, whatever the constants he hinted at in the question, I don't remember off the top of my head. So if we, if we can just picture this particle right here, and then so it'll just like basically just oscillate back and forth with the amplitude that we just described and um, with the frequency of uh, three omega, again, those constants being whatever we describe them as, right? And so that is the, um, uh, that's the physical benefit of finding the expectation value and finding the amplitude and the frequency of it and leaving it all in terms of things that are just physically make sense, like the A over two. It's gonna be a common uh, principle that we're gonna use in further quantum mechanics and just physics in general.